Hello and welcome to the third video in the DNS security uh, series. Yeah, we're trying to secure our DNS, we've got encrypted DNS and it's all good, but we need to make sure the firewall can see this traffic and we need to see, make the best use of our DNS security subscription. So, um, just as a side note, so now we were, we were originally using Libra DNS, okay, and as we can see now, uh, if you saw the last video, the um, DNS Security 2, you'll see we're using Libra DNS. I still have no real issue using Libra DNS, however, it's for ease of demonstration more than anything else, although that's what I thought, for ease of demonstration, I moved to Quad9 because it looks like a really good project and um, that was easier to get the TLS configuration. Okay, so just a, a quick note, and I do hate saying it, I do cringe, if you've not subscribed, if you could subscribe, that could be awesome, and leave a like if you like the video, and don't if you don't, it's, um, it's all good. And all constructive comments and, and criticisms and so on um, are, are more than welcome. So, I thought it was gonna be easy just to swap to Quad9 for this demonstration, however, I was very wrong. So. Through trial and error, I ended up with this application here. When it opens, okay, and that's Stubby Manager. And the reason for that is because I went down the rabbit hole of the uh, changing the reg key and everything like that to allow um, Windows to use um, DNS over TLS or DNS over HTTPS. That didn't work or anything like that. It is supported natively in Windows 11, so that's something to look forward to. But then I ended up down this huge massive issue of trying to fire up Windows 11 on my ESXi server, which turns out to be older than the hills, and so I can't. So anyway, we ended up here. And to be fair, it looks like a fairly sort of straight up application. Now, just quick word of note, this is a security channel. So it does come down as being an untrusted publisher. This is a VM that's isolated from my network, my home network and anything else. It goes straight out to the internet, it can't get anywhere else. And I just kind of figured, well, it, it'd be okay. Um, if you are going to download Stubby Manager and you're gonna use it, I absolutely don't endorse it one way or the other. It seems to work for what I want to do, but then I didn't have any security considerations at the time because if anything happens to this VM, I just scrap it and move on. Okay, so basically the, the, the idea behind this is you download an MSI file and then you have network profiles so for it to connect to wherever you can select multiples, and do a round robin and so on and, um, and that's how it works. So what it then does is when we switch it on and we start it and it updates and so on, what it does is basically it goes in and it changes the, um, it starts to run a service, its own DNS service and it changes the DNS settings of the box to the uh, loopback, local loopback interface, so your um, device is now using that local uh, local loopback, okay, um, which I believe we can actually see if we go really, really quickly. Um, if I go to network and internet, and properties, it's on time, yeah. So we can see now that it's using, for its DNS, it's using 127.0.0.1, which is, as we all know, the loopback. Okay, now it can't connect out at the minute because the firewall rules haven't been uh, haven't been created for it, so we're gonna go to look to the firewall rules. And it's, when we do the video on this on 11, I'm wondering if we're gonna see anything different on 11, but there's a few sort of caveats. This is really not that difficult a shift from the um, over HTTPS to over TLS, so, uh, but there's a few odd things with the, the, the reporting of it once it's done. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's running away. It runs as a system tray um, application, which can be seen there. So we can just clear that and then we can come back to it. And hopefully this time it works absolutely perfect. And we come back to our firewall. So on our firewall, we can see now we've got our, um, we've got our security rules and everything like this that we had previously. And uh, sorry, that was our decryption rules. Now we're gonna look at our security rules. Once there, we've got the allow DNS over HTTPS. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone that rule and the reason I'm going to do that is because that's DNS over HTTPS. Now, this shows as DNS over HTTPS as an application, but I don't want it to get confused with that. So I'm going to change this. So this is 
DNS over 853 TLS. I'm going to drop that service. I'm going to put the TCP 853, which is what the, the TLS over TLS runs on. And it's going to have all the same stuff. So we're going to have our DNS over HTTPS for our anti-spyware profile. So we've got all of our um, all of our inspections running across it, and our URL alert only, and so on and so on. The login, etc. Okay. So now that's in, and we've also got underneath, as you can see there, we've got a block rule as well. So we're blocking everything other than these. And then we're going to go to our decryption rule. And under our decryption rule, we're going to clone this one. Because it's just the simplest way of doing it. And we're going to change that to 853, which is DNS over TLS. The source and everything is going to stay the same. The service and the category is going to be different, of course. So we're going to pull the HTTPS and we're going to put in our 853. Everything else is going to remain the same. We're going to have our forward proxy and our decrypt profile as, uh, as we did previously. Okay, and believe it or not, that is literally it. This is it's going to be like quite a short video. So that's, that's literally it. We have, so we've created a separate rule for our 853, which is so that we can see this separately in the logs. And we've got a separate rule for, um, a uh, separate security rule, sorry, for the login again for that and not to get confused with anything else. So it will be categorized as DNS over HTTPS. So I'm just going to commit that. And then once I've committed that, we'll go back to the to the desktop to see that um, now our um, stubby, sorry, forgot the name, stubby can now connect. Okay, so now that's committed. So if we just nip back to our desktop and I do a connection test. It's now connecting, okay? Had a little bit of a moment there where my heart jumped a little tiny bit, but yeah, if we do a connection test again, it should just connect. Cause, and what it does there is basically it runs a DNS query against um, the server, which in this particular instance is quad nine, as we said before. Okay, if we come back to our firewall, we can see as well, we should be able to see that. And then we can see we've got DNS base. Now DNS base, here is the, the odd thing, okay? So as in the, the uh, documentation, so anybody can check me up on this if, if, if need be. So as in the documentation, once it's being decrypted, it comes up as DNS base, which is why I really wanted to change that um, change that rule. Now, as it turns out, my rule hasn't really worked anyway, um, and we'll just look at that. In fact, we'll look at that now and find out why that is. And I'm assuming that is because DNS base does not exist in there. Yeah, so because I left the DNS over HTTPS in, which I'm gonna remove now, Okay, so what I've got there is I've got everything that's going to 853. 853 is a reserved pool, so nothing else should be using it. Uh, and I've got a URL category of DNS over HTTPS, which contains only the quad nine and it contains uh, only the uh, DNS query for quad nine as well. So just before I, I commit that, we'll have a look at the monitor again and we'll see that we've got our DNS base when it's doing that. But if you look further down when it was being blocked, it was DNS over HTTPS. This is expected behavior. This is what you'll see. Um, if we go back to the desktop, get rid of that, come up here. Okay, and we go to our DNS security test. Okay, and we do test C2. We'll see that we don't get any response from it. And if we come back to our firewall, I had to uh, negate the vulnerability subtype because I was getting spammed to death with something else. I don't know what this box is reaching out to, but whatever it's reaching out to, it sees as a vulnerability. 
and we can see that we've got our generic test there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change it. The application is DNS based as well, and it's sync hold because of the uh, because of the severity, and we've got a packet capture. Okay, so in addition to changing that rule to what it should be, I'm going to remove the decryption rule for a brief spell, so we can just see the the difference between decrypted traffic and encrypted traffic. Okay, so back here we're going to take going to look at our DNS decryption rule here, which can disable it. Like that, and I'll push the uh, I'll push the policy to the firewall, and then what we should see is we should see that it, we get the 404 error from Google because it's been allowed through and we got no log for it, and that's basically because even though we've got our DNS subscriptions, as soon as we start using encrypted DNS, the firewall can't see it. It can't see that DNS uh, query, so it's allowed through, and then it, you hope it then gets caught by other things like URL filtering or or something like that. So we'll just do that, and, uh, and then we'll come back to look at it. Okay, so now that configuration is committed, and I, it took forever that, I mean, obviously it was very quick for you guys. So, we've now, we've removed the decryption. As you can see, changed my, uh, my security policy, so that now is just anything to 853, which we'll check. Yep, that's all good. So monitoring now, we should see, hopefully going over that rule, and if we don't, then fair enough. But um, it should be going over that rule now. Which fortunately for me, it is now going to allow DNS over 853 TLS, so that makes sense. So if we go back over to our desktop, and we get rid of that one there, and go back to here, we get connection reset, but we don't get connection reset because of the um, the URL, uh, the DNS security. We get the connection reset because of a filtering thing further down the line. It's because it's not being decrypted. Okay, so if we go back across to our firewall now, and we can see that as well, we can see that it's on the URL filtering. Go back to the firewall, go to URL filtering. And we'll see that it's going across a different rule. It's going across the internet rule at the bottom uh, of the, the rule base, and it's being blocked based on the URL. So our um, our DNS rules have got a URL filtering, but it's for alert only, so that we can see if anything, any other traffic is going across it. But this one here, so specifically this, if we have a look, we can see that we've got block URL, and the rule it was on was land to internet, so it was allowed through. Just see if there's, so coming back here, if I was to go for, um, go for greyware, connection reset, and command and control, which has come from the, um, the land to internet rule. Uh, I was just wondering, just looking to see if there's one that I can find. Yeah, so then we get a 404, um, error, and that's because it's allowed through, and the, I say these pages don't exist. So that's the that that's the effect of removing that that um, decryption is it can't see the DNS lookup. Whereas if we put the decryption back on, okay. And so now that we're back decrypting, we'll go back over to our desktop. And now we're here, we'll just check and see. So we'll go to our DGA, nothing happening. To our test pan W, again, just spinning round. Uh, Greyware, just spinning. And this is all because it's waiting for a, a DNS um, reply, which it won't get, and we'll see that actually in a second. We'll see that it won't get the DNS reply. Uh, actually, whilst we're waiting for that, if we just nip back to the firewall and we go to our monitor tab for our threats, okay, and we can see on the firewall that we've got all of our stuff now being caught as spyware. It's all being sinkholed. If we go back to the desktop, we can see that that's. DNS Pro finish, bad config, D 
and it's probably finished bad config. So it's being stopped before it even gets it. And that's the importance of the, the uh, decryption um, and being able to decrypt that DNS. So yes, DNS, encrypted DNS is definitely, uh, it's definitely something you should be doing. It's definitely something you should be, um, you should be uh, utilizing in your environment and it does make things more secure. However, we need to make sure that we can deal with that at the firewall stage. So that's it for this one. Um, we're gonna look at PanOS 11 and everything so on afterwards. And um, yeah, so happy, happy blue teaming and uh, I'll see you in the next video.